Hi everyone, my name is Miss Tank and today I'm going to show you how to divine with the I Ching using the traditional Yarrow Stock divining method. The I Ching is the oldest recorded book of divination. It dates back to Neolithic times. So this method of using Yarrow Stocks to divine is thousands of years old. What's special about this method is that it uses the element of wood. It uses plants to connect the diviner or inquirer with the words of our ancestors, the I Ching. So the first thing that you're going to need is a setting. It's going to be really important for you to have a place that you can return to for your divination practice. It should be a place where you can be undisturbed, where you can achieve a clarity and peace of mind. As you can see, this is where I do my divination practice in this beautiful Manzanita Grove. You can choose to have an outdoor space or anywhere inside, as long as it's a space that is peaceful and restful for you. The second thing you're going to need is a table. The third thing is yarrow stalks. Yarrow stalks are a medicinal plant found in many parts of the U.S., specifically the West Coast. Yarrow is hollow on the inside. So for this divination practice, it acts as an antenna. When we do this process, we're going to be doing a lot of meditative and repetitive counting, and that is going to hijack the logical and reasoning mind so that these antennas can pick up messaging. I also like to use coins to keep track of my repetitions. So you can use any type of coin. I like to use these Chinese coins that are hollow in the center and you will need three coins. You'll also need a journal. And finally, your favorite copy of the I Ching. I will make a list of my favorite interpretations of the I Ching in the description of this video. When you have everything you need, it's time to formulate your question. This is the time for you to be with yourself, to have a conversation with yourself, and to reflect what areas in your life need clarity. The I Ching is not a yes or no oracle. Yes or no questions don't work well with the I Ching. Neither do either or questions. The I Ching is translated as the book of change. So I like to describe it as a weather report. When you're divining with the I Ching, you're asking, what weather am I in? What are the larger cosmic forces affecting me at this time? Am I headed towards a storm? Is it clear skies ahead? Another way to look at the I Ching is to see it as a tool for locating where you are in the river of time. So really it's an inquiry into your personal temporal landscape. So after you formulated your question, you'll write it down in your journal. You will take your 50 yarrow stalks, place them on your table, and your three coins on the other side of your table. You'll designate a yin and yang side to your coins. So it doesn't matter, heads or tails, which side is designated where. I have chosen the side of the phoenix and the dragon to be the yin side, and the side with characters to be the yang side. Again, which side you pick doesn't matter, so long as the yin side is facing up first. Now taking your 50 yarrow stalks with your left hand, you will use your right hand to remove a single yarrow stalk from the bundle and setting it aside. This single stalk will not be used for the entirety of the divination process. Now taking that bundle again with the left hand, you will split it into two using the right hand. You will place both the left hand and right hand bundles side by side. Now with the right hand bundle you will remove one stalk and set it aside. When you do this 
you will flip over one coin, showing that the first round has begun. Now, with the left hand, picking up the left hand bundle, you will remove four yarrow stalks at a time into the center between the two bundles. You will continue to remove four yarrow stalks from this bundle like so. Until you have four or less stalks left. And with those four or less stalks left, you will place them with the discarded stalk at the top. Now we can move on to the right-handed bundle. So you'll take this bundle and again put it in your left hand. We always count by holding the bundle on the left hand and removing the stalks four at a time with our right hand. So again, we'll do four at a time, removing four stalks at a time until we have four or less left. And those, again, will go in the discarded pile at the top. Now we're ready to begin round two. You will take the yarrow stalks, holding it with your left hand, and we'll re repeat the process. So you'll take your right hand, split the bundle into two, with the right hand pile, discard one. Now flip a coin, round two has begun. Taking the left hand pile first, we'll remove four at a time, until there is four or less remaining. And whatever is left remaining goes to the pile at the top. Now we do the remaining bundle, again holding it on the left hand, removing four stalks at a time with the right. Now with your remaining stalks, you can place them on the top and you regroup the bundle. You see we've done round one, two, and now we're on our last round. Taking the bundle with the left, splitting in half with the right, taking one stalk from the right hand side, placing it at the top. Now we are in our final round. Taking the left hand, removing four stalks at a time, I have three remaining. Make sure your bundles don't get crossed over. Going on to the second pile using the left hand, removing four at a time until you have four or less remaining. That will go into this pile. And now you've completed the first series of three rounds. When you're down to your final round, it's time to count the bundle in the center. You will count in groups of four. Four stalks is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. This is a broken or yin line. If you receive six, it is a broken changing yin line, which we notate by putting an X in the center. A changing line denotes that it is an old line. This is old yin, meaning it's about to change. It's about to transform. So this line will change into its opposite in your final hexagram. If you count seven in your final count, this is a young, yang line, an unchanging line. 
if you receive 8, this is, again, a broken yin line that is unchanging, a young yin line. And if you receive 9, it is a changing yang line. It is an old yang line about to change into its opposite. We received 8 in our first line. The I Ching is made up of hexagrams, so we have five more lines to go. Hexagram is made up of six lines. So to start the next line, we will repeat that whole process again. We'll grab the bundle. Remember to keep the one stock left alone. We'll start with the 49 stocks again. I'll demonstrate to you this second round. Splitting the bundle in two, removing one stock, flipping the first coin over, left hand, removing four at a time. Four or less remaining. The next bundle, left hand, four or less remaining, regroup, split into two, remove one stock from the right hand side, flip another coin. Left hand, removing with the right, remaining stocks, remaining stock. Now we are on to our final round in this line. Remaining stops. Now we count the bundle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We look at the key, seven, it's a straight line, it's a young, young line. Yarrow stock Divination is a microcosmic performance of the macrocosmic universe. It describes Taoist cosmology. We start with the bundle of everything, which represents primordial chaos, the beginning, the beginning from which all things are born, also called Huin Dun. When we remove one stock from this pile, this one stock that doesn't participate in the rest of the divination process, it represents the observer, the witness, and emptiness. It is the timeless one, the unchanging one, called Wu Ji. It also represents non-being and non-doing, Wu Wei. When we split this pile into two, from the left to the right hand, we are showing the birth of duality. From the interaction of yin and yang, all things are born. The yang pile is on the left, the yin pile is on the right. When we remove one stock from the yin pile, 
we are remembering the principles of offering and sacrifice. So as we accumulate and increase and create complexity with the intermixing of yin and yang, we remember the principles of decrease, that sacrifice is an investment for the future. That is why one stock from the right hand pile or the yin pile is sacrificed. We are performing the power and wisdom of yin. After these piles intermix and there's the counting, then yin and yang come back together again to create the myriad beings. And we start over again. Now we are in line three and we will repeat this process until we receive six lines. So we're at our last round where we're counting our last pile. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have no changing lines in this reading. The I Ching hexagrams are always read from the bottom up. So this trigram is water and this trigram is earth. So we have in this reading the lower trigram of water and the upper trigram of earth. So taking the trigrams we received of water below and earth above, we'll take a hexagram table. We will start with the lower trigram of water and the upper trigram of earth. And you'll see that they come together forming the hexagram seven, shi or the army. Because there are no changing lines in this reading, you do not have a second hexagram. Now, this is where your favorite copy of the I Ching comes to play. And you can read the interpretation and extrapolate what it means for your own life. 